Doc Rivers is in trouble, and the Milwaukee Bucks as a franchise are in trouble. The Milwaukee Bucks have been bad, like really bad. Their 2-8 and eight start to the season is the worst 10-game start for this franchise since Giannis was a rookie back in 2013. On a year that they were looking to improve on a 49-33 record that landed them the 3 seed after trading for superstar Damian Lillard, they are currently looking like one of the worst teams in the Eastern Conference. This Bucks team had just won a championship 3 seasons ago with Giannis only being 27 years old and most of their main core intact. And I remember at the time everyone felt like this team was destined for greatness. I mean, people are arguing at the age of 27, Giannis already had a Hall of Fame resume and this team was destined to win three or four NBA championships. Now, fast forward to 2024, they've had consecutive playoff losses. They have fired two head coaches and now they look like one of the worst teams in the East. How did this happen? And does it mean that it's over for the Milwaukee Bucks? After trading away Drew Holiday, the Bucks struggled on defense all last season and have been inconsistent and lifeless to start this year. Teams are consistently picking on Lillard in particular, putting him in actions where he is forced to guard players twice his size. Their defensive problems do not stop at Lillard, however. The Bucks have been horrendous in transition defense. Like look at this play for example. After Bobby Portis makes his shot, the Grizzlies are going to inbound the ball. Scottie Pippen Jr. is going to be able to walk it up. No one on the Bucks defense decides to sprint back, which results in a late recovery picking up the ball, which is basketball 101. You have to pick the ball up. And because of that, Scottie Pippen is able to blow by and get a wide open layup. This is just one play that shows some of the struggles they've had on the transition defense. This is more of a coaching issue more than anything else. When you have a lackluster of effort, fans are going to point their finger at the head coach. Which brings us to another problem with Milwaukee. The Bucks fired Griffin halfway through the season last year to hire none other than Doc Rivers. Now, if you've been following basketball for five, 10 years now, you know the name Doc Rivers and you know about his very underwhelming resume. Now, I'm not saying Doc is a bad coach because he's won a lot more than he's lost and he has an NBA championship, but Doc also has a history of taking over teams that are extremely talented and I don't want to say run them into the ground, but they just underperform or they end up blowing leads in the playoffs. That's just who Doc is. At the time of recording, Doc Rivers has a 22 and 28 record as the head coach of the Milwaukee Bucks. Things have gotten so bad over there in Milwaukee that their star franchise player, Giannis, has been considered leaving. So the Doc Rivers experience in Milwaukee is not working and the team looks worse after the Damian Lillard trade and now you have rumors that your franchise star player is unhappy and yes it's very very early in the season I don't want to overreact but I'm also not surprised by the situation going into the year I actually had a conversation with one of my friends they said who's the team that you think is going to underperform and really won't be that good this year and I was like the Milwaukee Bucks personally I felt like the Damian Lillard Giannis situation never really got figured out last year and now you're going into another year where Middleton's already been hurt I still don't think Dame and Giannis know how to play together and the East has got I don't want to say better but they've passed up the Milwaukee Bucks I mean you have the Cleveland Cavaliers the Boston Celtics or the Boston Celtics the Orlando Magic are a nice young team like the East has passed up the Milwaukee Bucks at this point I also said the 76ers but that's a whole different video but we're focusing now on the Milwaukee Bucks they look like a team now that is not up to par with the top teams in the East. Which leads us to the last and most glaring issue with this team, which is the age of the roster. To be frank, the Bucks core is really old. Lillard is 34, Middleton's 33, and Giannis turns 30 next month. In addition, the Bucks have failed to develop any sort of young talent on this roster. Outside of the main guys, this roster really have nothing to offer for the next few years. And then if you even want to look at trade pieces, they don't really have a lot of draft capital. Like I said, they have no young core at all. No one's going to be trading for a Damian Lillard or Chris Middleton. The only guy that people really might want is Giannis Antetokounmpo. And if you trade away Giannis, you're blowing the whole team up. So with that being really the only other option for the Bucks, it makes us look at them and say, is their championship window truly over? And is it time to blow it up? To answer that question, I think we first need to define what a championship window is. In very simple terms, a championship window is a time when a team has their best chance of winning a championship. A multitude of things can determine this. The age of your stars, the contracts, the difficulty of the conference, their head coach, etc. So taking all that into consideration, I do think there is a way we can kind of figure out what teams are in their championship window now 
and who's outside of their championship window. And in order to figure this out, I want to use six criteria of a championship team. First is you have to make the conference finals the previous season. If you did that, then I think you're still in your championship window. So that ushers in the Indiana Pacers, the Boston Celtics, the Dallas Mavericks, and the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, if you do not make it, I think you need to have four of the next five of these criteria. Be a plus 50 win team, have a top 10 offense and top 10 defense, be a plus five net rating, and have a plus five SRS or made the second round. Using this measuring stick, I think there's only four teams in the NBA who are currently in their championship window. Like I mentioned before, the Celtics, Mavericks, Pacers, Timberwolves, also the Denver Nuggets, Oklahoma City Thunder, and the New York Knicks. None of those teams being the Milwaukee Bucks, who seem to just be outside of their championship window. Now, obviously, this is using last year's numbers, so they can creep into that window and crazy things can happen. This is just a criteria that I came up with. Now, the reason why the Bucks have fallen out of this championship window and why I didn't really believe in them coming into the year is for something that I like to call post-championship syndrome. Basically, what happens is your team wins an NBA championship and everybody is happy, right? Your organization's happy, your staff's happy, your players are happy, everyone's stock goes up, everyone's resumes look better. Well, especially for your role players. Usually what happens is now I'm an NBA role player and I might have been making 10 million a year or 8 million, I don't know. Let's say I make 8 million a year and I'm on a contract year and I win an NBA championship. Well, now when I go and talk to my next team, my number has increased because I have some hardware under my name. And it's going to be that much harder for my team to match the money because of cap room and things of that nature, plus the new CBA, but the Bucks weren't dealing with that back in 2021. Most recently, the Denver Nuggets, who lost Bruce Brown and KCP in back-to-back -back years and now look like a team on the outside looking in, trying to win one more championship. The Bucks, however, did retain most of their core guys after their championship, but they did go on to lose in the second round against the Boston Celtics the following year. After this loss is when we started to see some of the dominoes fall with them losing Dante DiVincenzo. The season after that, they had the best record in the East and then lost in the first round to the Miami Heat. Now, Giannis missed a significant amount of time in the series and I think the Bucks still had a chance to coming back the following year and being good, but this is when the front office began to overreact and they said, hey, we need more scoring because without Giannis, we can't score the basketball. So they went out and got one of the best scoring guards in the NBA and Damian Lillard. But they didn't factor in how much they were really losing in Drew Holiday. I mean, this was their best defender, their best playmaker, and their third best scorer, all gone for a guy who is an elite scorer but really can't do the other things that Drew can do on the court. And all that led to last year where they trade away Drew, brought in Damian Lillard, then fired their head coach Mike Boonholzer to bring in Griffin, and then fired him halfway through to bring in Doc Rivers. And now you just have a mess over in Milwaukee, which was once a nice, cohesive championship roster. This simple overreaction is the main reason I think the Bucks are struggling today. It's the main reason why I didn't believe in them. It's the main reason why, quite frankly, I don't think they're going to get out the second round if they even get out the first round, depending on who they see in the playoffs. This team really has no identity anymore, and this roster consists of two aging stars with a bunch of mediocre role players. Not to mention the team was not given the proper time to build chemistry after trading for Damian Lillard and firing their head coach and then bringing in a new system. Now, unfortunately, the Bucks are out of the time where you can say, well, give them a year or two to figure things out as this championship window has closed and Giannis has one foot out the door and Dame, I don't even know how many years left he has a contract, but he wanted to be in Miami originally. He never really wanted to come to Milwaukee. Who knows how happy he is over there? And Doc Rivers will probably only be there a year or two until he finds a new job. So the Bucks are really in this position where you kind of have to just Go all in, put all your chips on the table, hope that you can maybe get a trade to help this team out this season, and then hope for the best in the offseason. I don't really know where the Milwaukee Bucks go after this. Like I said, there's really not a lot of draft capital that they have, and there's no young guys that they're developing. They really gonna either have to trade Giannis or just wait till he retires and then do something else. As I was about to push upload on this video, I thought it'd be a disservice if I made this whole Bucks video and I didn't say the update. Now, the Bucks now are currently 4-1 and one their last five games, and they've been looking better. It doesn't take away for anything I said in this video. They look 
better. But if you look at the last five games, they really haven't played really anybody. The last five games have been the Bulls, the Rockets, they lost to the Hornets, the Pistons, and the Raptors. So they're really not beating good teams. Um, I do think they just kind of went out of their gauntlet of hard teams, but I'm not going to take that away from them. Um, they are being NBA teams, so let's not act like they are NBA teams. But I still think that this little flurry that they're on, I think they're six and one now, six and nine, sorry, six and nine now um, on the year. I still don't believe in this team. I still think that they are an old team. Middleton's on his way back. But I did want to just kind of add that in that they are playing better right now. Uh, I don't know if this could be a sign things to come. I don't believe it will be. Anyways, that's all. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, God bless.